So true, right? We gotta we gotta swing that club through positions, not position it through the swing. That's Love what that. way too many recreational golfers do is they look for these perfect checkpoints, but they're not yeah. seeing how it all blends <laughs> yeah. together, right? Yeah. Creating yeah. emotion out of it, Toby. That's exactly what we're trying yeah. to achieve here. No, I love it. Thanks for tuning in guys. Kerry Gray here today at Bali National Golf Club, a wonderful facility here on the island. Standing here next to my good friend, Toby Magici. Toby's one of the world's best online coaches. You can check him out on Skillist and over on social media. Toby, thanks for coming along, my man. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Today with Toby, we're gonna to be running through a bunch of great drills and exercises to help you make some changes that are actually going to work fixing your frustrations with your outcome. That means your ball flight, that means your strike. And this is what matters to help you shoot lower scores. A lot of great information here, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, Toby, so what we're looking at here is a player who actually has a really nice aesthetic golf swing through a lot of stages throughout yeah. the motion, right? And he can shoot great scores. But yeah. he came to you, he said he was really struggling with his consistency of scoring under pressure. Big word. Yep, consistency. Yeah, absolutely. He's a great range player. Uh, at home with no pressure, he can go out and he can shoot some low scores. Yeah. But when it comes to something that meant a lot, he just felt like he didn't really have much control over his swing. Yeah, right? okay. So yeah. what we've got here, and we we're talking about this earlier when we we're analyzing, we we're kind of running through uh, both our perceptions of what happens with this golfer's swing, is we've got the model over here on the left-hand side at the lead arm parallel in the backswing position and got him at, as well. Now, within reason, without looking too much at the subtleties, these look very similar, correct? Yeah. yeah and exactly even right. if you were just to send a 2D image of this guy to me, I'd say, yeah, he could, he could probably get it done. Yeah. But really from here <laughs> yeah. to the top of the motion, yeah. is where we start to see some huge differences, right? Yeah. Now, on top of the inconsistency that he was experiencing when he was playing and the frustration that ensues from that, what else was he kind of detailing to you that he really wanted to improve with his game? For him, right, that he felt like he did not know what the ball was going to be doing. Yeah. So it wasn't like it was a consistent, maybe an overdraw under pressure. Yeah. It, was, it did not know what was going to come into play. Okay. You know, and like you say, when the recreational golfer, the amateur golfer, or even some coaches that matter, look at just screen grabs, oh, yeah. you can be misguided to what's really going on because we want to know where things are moving into those positions and how we can react into the golf ball. Mm. So from here, uh, what we call it P3, right, for our coaching terms here, mm -hmm. lead arm parallel to the ground. From there, we want to learn, if you take him to the top of the backswing here on the right-hand side, oh, it's, yeah, take... Uh, recreational golfer there you'll see from the from there essentially just a fold and an arm lift oh, so yeah. it gets really narrow there that shaft is really close to the, the trail shoulder there yeah, we can see not that. a whole lot of width and if you get mr robert rock on the left hand side here you'll see from there as he raises that club head as a visual to see without getting technical is above the hands mm. and and for someone well for two players who are in a very similar position let's look at some of the effects that we see here as a result. Well, we can see how much this trail elbow has actually moved past that seam line of his shirt versus Roberts from the same camera angle. You can see how much more in front it is. You can see the length that golf club has swung in regards to where the head is, the stability of the, the wrists, the structure. We can see over here on the right-hand side, the club's gone very long, isn't it? Yeah. So the wrists have begun to get into such a position where they've actually started to extend or get a bit of a cupping look to them at the top. Yeah. And for, for two players that were in very similar positions, this right here, as coaches, we look at this and we go, okay, now we can see where this comes from, right? Yeah. This, this is where this gentleman's inconsistency is working from. So uh, talk us through a little bit more about this. Yeah, so basically what's happened there is as he's gone into what we call too much radial hinge with the wrist there, right, mm -hmm. that club head has dropped down really, really narrow, it's going to have effects on the club face Big as time. well. But from here, right, when that player has done that, they've lost stability of the handle and it's how they're going to react in the downswing. Okay. So how they're going to start their downswing pressures, which we'll go into, as in they're going to be starting the downswing potentially more with pulling down on that handle. Yeah. And, you know, not going to be able to really kind of rage, or sorry, gauge the consistency in the width coming down too narrow. Yeah, totally, totally, absolutely. And we can see that that trail elbow for him, uh, certainly a little bit more behind his body by this stage of the swing. And it's definitely a lot more pinned up against that shoulders or up against that chest by that stage of the downswing, right? So let's talk about this and put it all together in regards to uh, you demonstrating. And yeah. then we can talk through the, the adjustments that we made as a result here. Yeah, so firstly, this player is a good player, right? And we are making this change purely based on 
He wants to develop some more consistency in his game. Oh, yeah. And we have found this as a potential weak point. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that this, you know, there is players out there who have moved this way, which is, you know, what we go from lead arm parallel to the ground, there is a potential, a little bit of a collapsed kind of look this way here. So we'll see that club head go down. That lead wrist starts to move into a real extension, which is that kind of cupping motion there. Yeah, we do see that. And to even show again from, you know, from this angle there, is that when we get too dominant, and then we can end up just pulling on the handle that way there, and we are mo losing. So what I want you to do is swing to the top, get into a very similar position. Now, you're saying he loses the structure here, too much radial. We can see instantly, as soon as this here with this wrist, so give me a good structure for me. Yeah. Right? We would see that, that would be where the model was. Now, as soon as we get this golf club moving in this direction, we can see this trail elbow move more behind the body. Yeah. We can see this right there begin to move into that cupping position. And yeah. the face begins to open, doesn't it? Yeah. From there, unless you're making some serious conversations of trying to twist this handle yes. and throw it away like that yes. to get any sort of structure back, yeah. Yeah. we just see the player generally just drag it back down. Yeah. This gets too narrow. This is too pinned up against the shoulder plane. Yeah. And it just causes issues, right? Yeah. And not only does that get too narrow, I guess, there is that it's the... It's the makeup of the face as well, Correct. being incredibly open. Yeah. You know, like we, we can play a little narrow, but we don't want to be this way here. We want to at least be moving more into a flex position coming down for there to help us with our delivery. Okay, great. So to talk, if you just take us through to our left arm parallel to the ground, the backswing. Mm -hmm. From here, right, I've got a really simple explanation on how to get that club up from there. Great. So a lot of golfers get really caught up in trying to get that club all the way to parallel to the ground. Oh, yeah. You know, like Adam Scott 2000 or Tiger Woods, mm -hmm. where for me, we're all physical, we're all limited differently in how we need to get to. And I like to look at the end of the golf swing more based on the, the pivot, right? Correct. So our shoulder rotation. So at lead arm parallel to the ground, some simple checkpoints to here to help get that club further up. The only thing that needs to happen well, you know, through me, through my, is that the trail arm there will slightly flex a little more as, you, as you're extending your thoracic spine there. Correct. Yeah, so that, that's how you move. And not only when you're moving that way, you're actually starting to move, you shift your pressures around as well. Yeah, Because yeah. when you go, go back down a little bit more again, so if you just collapse that right arm and lift that club up, you've, you've stopped moving. Yeah, essentially yeah. haven't created enough turn of the upper torso to the top of the swing, yeah. which then has a direct influence in your ability to recenter and shift your pressure correctly in the yeah. right direction. We can see the effect that this has on that lead knee that you would see with the professional versus yeah. if I only get my backswing to about here, and I begin starting to drag that handle down in that position. Yeah. This sequence, the club face is all out of whack, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's get ourselves up into this position. So let's say I'm at the top. I feel like a nice big turn. Yep. The club feels in a great position. What are we doing from there, bud? Yeah. So from here, right? So, and I, I, once again, like, you know, we'll talk about this previously as well, is that I like to actually use the sequence when I'm doing this movement is I'll actually swing them the whole way to lead arm parallel to the ground in the downswing. So I want them to still create a movement of it. So it'll look like this here. So when they're rehearsing it, is that they go up to there. Okay, so they're blending it. Yeah, so yeah. they're recentering back to lead arm. Okay, Definitely, great. because what we're doing there is we don't want to get too caught up in what that look is going to look like, because once again, this player may have been caught up in here mm -hmm. at that screenshot position. Yeah. And then from there, we're taking away that movement. So if we can tell him there that he's good there, mm -hmm. I want him to change his reaction through adding rotation and then just folding the trail arm just short. Let's go to the top of the backswing and then move down to that. Exactly right. Yeah, so beautiful. then now I've actually moved thinking around into this area. Yeah, it feels like I'm gripping the ground a lot more. Yeah. I can feel like this lead knees really moving into this sort of outward external position. That's shifting that lower body. It's getting me on top. I feel like the arms are in a great spot. So yeah. much more powerful already. Yeah, and you don't have to deal with excessive amounts of folding and here and changes there. Yeah. So that's a variable we don't want to have to basically have to deal with. So, so you were getting him to swing to lead arm parallel. Yep. Right, get a feeling of what it was like from there to complete as a slow rehearsal. Yeah. And then straight away going into a dynamic motion drill. Yeah. So he wasn't getting so caught up on, now what do I do? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like, you know, through all my coaching, I definitely do not, not, I very rarely like to stop at the top of the backswing. Correct. Because we know with the professional golfer that there is a shift that's happening beforehand there. Mm -hmm. So I want him to now focus his attention away from the arms yeah. and we're doing less doing here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we're going less there, and I want to move attention to a different area yeah. to retrain on how to move and to and to control the golf club and that way there. So true, right? We got to we got to swing that club through positions, not position it through the swing. That's Love what that. way too many recreational golfers do is they look for these perfect checkpoints, but they're not yeah. seeing how it all blends <laughs> yeah. together, right? Yeah. Creating yeah. emotion out of it, Toby. That's exactly what we're trying yeah. to achieve here. No, I love it. All right, so should we do a couple of rehearsals of that and then hit one down there? So yeah. really focusing, for, for me, even in my golf swing, this is something that I have tended for a it's long true. time in my career. Yeah. To get this, I'm not completing my shoulder turn, my arms tend to fold. I used yeah. to get really deep in my lead wrist. Uh, yeah, actually cut. So it's what, an abundance of issues that can happen there, isn't oh, there? Huge. You know, it's it's no real blanket on it there. And I think if you can be like this player here, right, alongside Mr. Robert Rock, Mr. Robert Rock is one of the best ball strikers of our generation. For sure. And at the one position of the golf swing, they're nearly identical. Yeah. You know, and but their ball flight and how they play is worlds apart. Oh, so it shows you that that this part here, when the golf club is changing direction from the from the top of the backswing to the downswing mm. is where a lot of recreational golfers make that mistake because mm. that golf club is traveling one way and it's got to go back the other way yeah. and then doing it through this way here and potentially not moving our body yeah. which we know that that's one thing that's really consistent amongst great ball strikers is where their position their, and their pressure is in the ground yeah and so by doing that and keeping similar structure here then he can Play better golf. Okay, great. Yeah, so let's, let's show us again. So what we'll do is I will try and do my best interpretation of what we've just discussed there. So good setup. Uh, I'm first of all just going to get a feeling of what it'd be like to lead arm parallel. And then instead of folding and cupping and not completing, I'm really, for me, even I'm going to feel like I'm not really doing much at all with my trail arm. Yep. And I'm just trying to feel like I get a little bit more rotation. Okay, that's what it feels like there. Let's blend that into Toby's getting back to lead arm parallel. Love that. How'd that look there? Yeah, it's pretty good. good. It's really good. And, and let's just, you know, one more time on that is that's going to look different for everyone. Yeah. You know, that's going to look different from where you're going to be. Like if the, if the viewer is watching this is to not get too caught up in it all, but where you can feel where that restriction is stopping you because yeah. you don't want to go searching for more because you can potentially lose your angle. So yeah, find what works for you in that movement then because everyone looks a little bit different, right? Yeah. Yeah, for, that looks great. So do that again. For me, it feels like a bigger body swing yep. and a smaller arm swing versus a long arm swing and a short body swing. Yeah. So if you're telling the, the listeners or the viewers at home in regards to where, where your pressure is when you go from left arm parallel to there to the downswing again. I, where, I, I feel that shifting a lot through the ball and lead foot. Yeah. Into there. Exactly. And that's what they're very scared of doing. That's a whole nother video in itself. Yeah. But that's exactly what we want to be doing. And that, with you doing that, it's yeah. bringing the club down for you, not you having to pull in the handle. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fixing all these effects. Yeah. The, the players we can see can start scooping and chicken winging from this position. So by doing this exercise based on tidying up a little bit of what we see at the backswing through a dynamic motion drill, yeah. which you've given us, you'll find that the follow-on effects will be seriously impressive with what they can achieve. Yeah, yeah, and and you, but you're moving the focus in a slightly different subject area now because we don't like to say don'ts in the golf swing. Yeah, you know we want to start moving the doing into a different area. Yeah, and for me that you are now moving it through here, yeah. which we can consist consistently do, yes. and getting less of that. Okay. Yeah, great. great. Okay. So I'll Demonstrate. do a couple of rehearsals. Then yeah. I'll hit one down there. Love and it. We can see how that ball pops off. So I'm getting that feeling, not letting that trail arm move too far behind me. Just feeling like I'm getting a little bit more rotation. Do the recentering drill. That feels yeah. nice and powerful. How many of these? Three? Yeah, yeah, a few, definitely on the range. That yeah. feels great. Okay, now full speed, half speed, what are we doing? Yeah, I'd, I'd take it easy. Let's I, go. I, yeah, back it up a little bit. You know, and that's, that's fantastic there. And I guess lastly on it all is, you know, doing it at a slightly slower speed is important because you are actually now putting in an extra little bit of a movement yeah. and we've got to find time for that. Yeah, mate, yeah. that felt incredible. Great coaching. Great Cheers. stuff, thanks mate.